said, clap your hands on your team. Come on, make a shout of victory in here. I don't see you clapping your hands. Come on. Turn it. Come on. Greetings, I'm Prophetess Charlene D. Holtz. And I'm Bishop Randall E. Holtz. And we want to welcome you to the New Hope MBC Ministries of Miami, where we believe in building strong families for the 21st century and beyond. We welcome you to our live broadcast as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord. We invite you to join us in the praise and worship experience. Please invite a friend or two to come along as well. Now, let's go right into the service. Great morning, great morning, great morning. Today is Sunday. We are so excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Are you excited to tap, 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 tap in to, to the word, to what's going on in Christ all week long? I've been watching basketball back to back all day, all day. Every room I went in, it was basketball. It was Kentucky. It was UM. It was North Carolina. And we were calling on different teams all week. I've called on my friends. I called on my parents. But it's something about when you can call on the name of Jesus. It's something about when you can call on the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Shift changes. Things happen when you call on the name of Jesus. How many of you are ready to call on the name of Jesus? There's power in the name of Jesus. Things happen when we call on the name of Jesus. Shifting takes place when we call on the name of Jesus. The games were really good. My, my parents are really good to me, our children, our friends, but it's time to call on the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all, let's get excited about God. He is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving on our lips. God, we come surrendering all to you. We thank you, oh God, for being the head of our lives. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would take over and take control, oh God. Lord, we yield our voices to you, God. We yield our bodies to you, oh God. We pray, God, that you will have your way like never ever before. Move, Holy Ghost, move, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There are many people who wasn't able to get up this morning. Many people are displaced. Many people are grieving. But while yet you have blood one and warm in your veins, I dare you this morning to get out your comfort zone in your homes, in the pews, in your cars, and call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our praise team is getting ready to usher us in. They didn't come to entertain us. They didn't come to prep us up, but they came to usher us in. They coming with fire, and we're going to meet them with fire. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. How many know the Lord is good this morning? Come on, is he good to you this morning? I, you, you look good, so I know he's good to you. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord with us this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, this is the only goodie right here. We all celebrate this song. Come on. Here we go. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Hey, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hey, Lord, you're good, yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hey, Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on. People from every nation. Come on, let's celebrate the King. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We worship you. For who? For who you are. Yeah, yeah. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We worship you, God. Why do we 
worship you. Clap those hands. Come on. Come on. Let's have a Holy Ghost party this morning. Come on. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hey, Lord, you're good. Yeah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hey.
give God praise. Come on, he's a good God. Not some of the time. God's a good God all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He keeps making a way out of no way. Come on, he's making things behave. He's moving all kind of mountains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, come on. Let's just worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just find your place with worship today. I don't know your situation. You don't know my situation. But I know God has it all in control. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, wherever your problem may be, if you're interceding for someone else, a family member, a loved one, a co-worker, no matter what it is, come on, let's find our place right now and worship and let God have his way. Come on, lay it all on the altar and let God do it. Because whenever we get in his presence, trust me, something's about to happen. Come on, things are going to change when we get in his presence. Somebody's going to be blessed. Somebody's going to be healed. Somebody's going to be delivered when we get in his presence. So come on, you came here to worship him. Let's worship him. You turned on the computer to worship him. Come on and worship him. You're driving in your car listening to worship. Worship him. Come on. It don't take much. All you got to do is open your mouth and tell God how much you love him. Come on, hallelujah, all over the place. No matter where you are, near or far, come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. There's nothing like the presence of God. Nothing like it, hallelujah. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. We love the way you move and touch us. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. So move in this place. Let us feel your There's nothing. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. Come on, there's nothing like there's being in His presence. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. Oh God, we, we love, love the way, the way you, you move, move and, and you touch us, God. Touch us. There's, there's nothing like your presence. Come on, let's say that one more time. Oh God. Oh God, there's, there's nothing like. Hallelujah. Let it 
shine, God. Come on, come on, God. Come on, have your way. Come on, God. Move in this place. Move in this place, God. Move in this place, God. Move in this place, God. everybody just lift your hands and say that's nothing like the presence there's nothing like your presence oh god oh god there's, there's nothing, nothing like, like it. your presence oh god oh god we, we love, love the way, the way move. you move that's you touch you there's heal nothing like you deliver hallelujah come on one more time oh god, oh god. There's nothing, nothing like it. Like oh God. Come on, I dare you to give it to God. There's, There's nothing, nothing like getting like in his presence, presence and watching him work for you. Oh God. Oh God. There's nothing like it. Yes. Oh God. There's nothing like it. Presence. Come on. Oh God. There's nothing like it. Come on. Let him do the work. Oh God, come on, let him do the work. Nothing like your presence. Come on, let him do the work. Oh God, come on, let him do the work. Come on, let him do the work. Come on, let him do the work. All you gotta do is just praise him. Come on, let him do the work. All you gotta do is raise your hands, open your mouth, let him do the work. Come on, come on, let him do the work this morning. Come on, you know what it is. Let him handle it. Let God do it. Let God work it out. Oh God, there's nothing like it. The way you move, the way you touch. Come on. There's nothing like your presence. Oh God. Now come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on this morning. Come on. Come on, come on. Send it up this morning. Come on. Come on, release whatever you got going on. Come on. Free yourself. Come on this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. There's nothing like your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. We thought our little problems were something. I thought my little problems were something. I thought what my friends and what my family was going through was something. I thought what was going on in my community was something. I thought what was going on in, at our state level was something. I thought what was going on in our nation was something. And then I turned on the TV. And I said, what we got going on is nothing if the people in Ukraine could, could go to their homes and if the people in Ukraine could go back to what it was before war, before war was brought to their lands and before their people were slaughtered, before, if they can go to their houses of worship, if they could go and, and, and go to their jobs so that they could provide for their families. We thought what we had was going on was something. But right now, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. And God, we need you to move, God. We need you to move in our homes, God. We need you to move in our families, God. We need you to move amongst our youth, God. We need you to move in the hospitals, oh God. We need you to move in our state levels, God. We need you to move in government, God. We need you to move in our nation, God. We need you to move in our world. Y'all, come on. It's nothing like the presence of Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we need you like never before. We need your grace. We need your mercy. We need your love, God. We need you to come down, shower down, rain, God. We need you, God. The people of Ukraine need you, oh God. The people suffering with COVID need you, oh God. The people who are 
are grieving, they need you, oh God. The people who are battling depression, God, they need you, oh God. The people who are sick, they need you, oh God. Our first responders need you, oh God. Our children need you, oh God. They're failing in school. They're saying they're behind. But months and months and months, we need you like never, ever before, oh God. Our youth needs you, oh God. They're being slaughtered in the streets. God, we need you to move, God. We need your presence. We need your love. We need your grace. We need your mercy. God, we need you. Hallelujah. How many of you need the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. Today, you have a powerhouse, a brick house, a woman of God, a woman of faith, a woman of purpose coming before you today to minister the word of God. I know her like none other. She was my first best friend. She's my big sister, my big little sister. Her name is Chantel Holtz Rich. She's a mother. She's a wife. She's an educator. She's an assistant principal. She's a leader. She's an administrator. She is what she is because of the presence of the Lord. Because we came to the house of the Lord, because values were instilled in us. And even when we wanted to go left, something always put us back right. right and she's yeah. going to come and minister. She won't stand before you long, but I promise you, get ready, get ready, get ready to receive what the Lord has. Because a mighty move is coming through to her. Don't sit on her, get your praises. Get ready to raise your hand, give her your hallelujahs, give her your amens. We want to thank this praise team who's been steadfast, unmovable, unshakable, coming before us throughout this entire pandemic. They came, they pressed. Y'all come on, give it up for our praise team, our musicians. Come on, y'all, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Come on, on Facebook, bro, y'all give it up for them. While many of you are still home, they've been coming. Even before we opened our sanctuary, they've been pressing, they've been praising, they've been worshiping, they haven't stopped, they stayed on the wall. Let's give it up for our praise team and our, and our musicians, the people in the back making it happen. Because even when the world stopped, God still kept going. What if God would have stopped on us? What if God would have stopped on you? They kept pressing. So we want you guys to love on them. We want you to encourage them because they still have the things that we have to do, but they press and they're praising. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Get ready, get ready, get ready for what God is about to do. Hallelujah. We arrest the atmosphere right now. Anything unlike you, oh God, we remove it. God, we pray that you would saturate this sanctuary like never, ever before. God, we thank you for the willing vessel coming to deliver the word right now. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning thanking you and praising you for this day, Lord God. God, as I prepare to minister the word, I ask that you allow me to decrease and that you increase in me, Lord God. Let the words that I use, let everything I say be for your purpose, for your holy will. Let it bring souls unto you, Lord God. Fill me with your anointing, Lord God, like never before. And I just thank you for all that you are doing in this season in my life, not just my life, but the life of others, Lord God, the lives of others, Lord God. Continue to anoint us, continue to cover us, continue to guide, continue to shield and keep us, Lord God. Continue to direct us, and we just will forever give you all glory, honor, and praise because it's due unto you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Thank you, praise team. How y'all doing this morning? Whew. All right. So this morning, I want to just start off by saying thank you to my parents, my bishop, my prophetess, my mom, my dad for um, giving me this opportunity to speak this morning. Thank you to my sister for um, the amazing introduction. She almost had me teary-eyed. I'm like, boy, she's describing a phenomenal woman. I was like, she's talking about me. Whew. I love her. I love our relationship. I love the fact that we are best friends. We fight harder for one another than anybody else would. Um, we, we just love each other unconditionally and with no end. And I, I love our relationship. I, I cherish that, and I'm, I'm grateful. So, sister, thank you. I'm not going to be before you long, like she said. It's spring break, and we are um, administrators and teachers and students and those that are in the school system. We are excited for this week. We are excited to get rest. We deserve it. So anybody that's in the education system, congratulations. Take your well-deserved rest for this week. Enjoy it all, because that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to be before you long, because I got to start my vacation. Amen? <laughs> Um, but this morning, I just want to talk to you for a little moment about developing your hope. All right? This morning, I want to talk to you about developing your hope. And this is going to just be a little conversation we're going to have. It's not going to be too rowdy. Um, just a conversation. But I was, um, let me tell the truth. Bishop called yesterday morning, and he kind of said, okay, well, when are you going to deliver the word? You or Erica? And me and Erica kept punning back and forth. Yeah, it's your turn. No, it's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> I'm the oldest, so it was my turn. So, so I, I, I thought and meditated all day. And um, usually the way the Holy Spirit works is he tapped me in the middle of the night and he gives me um, what he gives me. So this is it. Um, so, God, I want to talk about developing your faith. And I, as I was meditating, I was just thinking and I was thinking like just about life in general. And as we navigate through this journey called life, we encounter situations, we encounter circumstances that may alter or that alter or maybe I should say that challenge our thoughts, our perceptions, and our beliefs, right? Yes? Okay, this is a, we gonna, I'm a teacher at heart. So when I talk, you respond, I know you're listening, and then I move on. So I'm going to say it again, and when I say right, you say yes. Got it? All right, got it. All right, so as we navigate through life, as we navigate through this journey called life, we encounter situations, we encounter circumstances that alter or maybe I should say they challenge our thoughts, our perceptions, or our beliefs. Is that correct? Yes. That is correct. Thank you. So this morning, I just want to encourage you to not get weary and well-doing. This is your season. This is your due season. You know why this is your due season? You have something that other people don't have. What you have, Chantel? What is that that I have that other people don't have? I'm glad y'all asked me this morning. You have hope. Amen? You have hope. You have what other people don't have. You have hope. It's a little simple four-letter word, and it's, 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 it's a small but powerful thing. You have what other people don't have. So I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you this morning not to get weary and well-doing. I don't want you to faint. I don't want you to stop. I don't want you to get tired. I don't want you to look at where you are and stay stuck in that situation. I want you to know that you are different from other people because you have something other people don't have, and that word is called hope. Amen? Now, when we talk about hope, hope is basically a desire or a 
a wish or a feeling of anticipation. That's, that's what hope is. If you want to go and look it up, hope is like a desire. It's a wish. I looked up some synonyms for hope, and it says it's a desire. It's a wish. It's an aspiration. My personal favorite um, synonym for hope is faith. Hope is faith. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I got to read that again. That's our scripture theme for, that's our theme scripture for the year. For I know I have the plans for you. That's what God is saying. He's telling us he knows the plans he have towards us. He says his plans are for us to prosper not to harm us, plans to give us a hope in the future, an expected end. That means that when God thought about us, when he is in the exception of wound at the point of conception, God already knew my name was going to be Chantel. He already designated a design to life, a plan for me. He already had a blueprint laid out for the direction, for the course, for the track of my life. He has hope for me. He has a plan designed to get me to my expected place, my desired place. It's going to prosper me. He didn't say that all the days of my life were going to be good and great and filled with all this positivity, but I have hope because in my days that I'm traveling, I'm going to get to my future, my expected end. He's going to prosper me. That's not plans of evil, not plans to destroy me, plans to get me to my expected end. Amen? Amen. The same plans he made for me, he made about you. So, like I said, I was thinking, and when I was a little girl, many of you know me because I grew up here, but as a child, I did not fully understand the significance of this scripture. I only saw it for the here and now that's in front of me. So when I was a little girl, all I saw was the scripture that we were reading. I didn't see past that scripture. I didn't, I didn't understand the significance of Jeremiah 29, 11. I didn't understand the significance of, for I know the plans I have towards you. For I know the plans I have about Chantel, plans to prosper her, to keep her, to help her, to get her to her good place and her expected end. I didn't understand. All I knew when I was a child was what was happening in my present situation, in the present tense as a child. I didn't understand. So guess what? When I was a child, I couldn't wait to be bigger because I didn't understand the plan that God had for me. So I wanted to grow up because I wanted to get to this place that I just thought I was supposed to get to. I wanted to hurry up and turn 15 so I could drive. I remember being a little girl and I wanted to drive, so I wanted to hurry up and be 15 so I could get my learner's permit. I'm experiencing that now with my youngest son because he itching to drive. He want to drive everywhere. And I'm like, baby, you're not 15 yet. But he don't let, we don't let him drive around the parking lot. They, then that parking lot became around the corner. Now he just want to drive. He think he has a driver's license. And I'm like, baby, you don't have a driver's license yet. But at first, when I first got my driver's permit, I was excited. I would go everywhere. Erica jump in the car with me. We would run to the farm store. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember the farm store? <laughs> I would run to the farm store. And my mama say, oh, I need some sugar. I would hurry up and grab them keys. I'd go get some sugar. I go to the grocery store. I was so eager. I would run an errand for my parents anytime. I was excited because I wanted to drive. I couldn't wait to go. We get the car. We get in the car. We turn the radio up loud and we just ride. I was excited. But it didn't take long. Guess what? <laughs> it didn't take long for me to get tired of driving. I was tired after a while. I was like, hmm, I don't want to go pick up no sugar. <laughs> I, ain't, I don't really want no Kool-Aid today. <laughs> I didn't want to go to the store no more. I was tired of running errands. I was like, Erica, hurry up and get your learner's permit so you can run to the store. I didn't want to drive no more. It wasn't fun. Then I wanted to be 21. I wanted to be 21 because I wanted to be legal. I wanted my driver's license not to say under 21. You know, that red stripe they give you. I wanted to be legal because guess what? I wanted to go to the clubs. Oh, y'all holy people in here. Y'all didn't want to go to the clubs. Okay. I'm sorry. Let me talk. Let me, Bishop is over there. My parents, not even Bishop, my parents over there, so I'm not talking to them right now. I wanted to be 21 because I wanted to go to the clubs. You know, I missed the days where they went to strawberries and all that stuff. So I wanted to go to the clubs. I wanted to go to Luke's on the beach. I wanted to go to Bermuda's. I wanted to go to, um, what's the one, Amnesia. I wanted to go to Brick House. I wanted to go to the clubs, okay? 
I don't know what I think back then. What was the one that they called them the starlight for the for the senior saints? What was the one they went to? Mid J Jetaway. I, for y'all, it was Jetaway. I wanted to go to the club. Okay. I wanted to go to the clubs. I wanted to be an adult. I wanted to do grown stuff. I wanted to hang out. I wanted to dance. I wanted to be an adult. Stay out late. Past the street lights coming on. I wanted to come home when it was time to wake up. That's what I wanted to do. But guess what? I got old enough, I turned 21, I went to the clubs, I stayed out, I partied. That got boring real quick, because I like to sleep. And the way I was raised, I don't care how late you stay up, you got to go to church in the morning. And my partying did not agree with my churching. So I couldn't club the way I wanted to club and come to church in the morning. So I couldn't do both. I don't know. I'm just speaking to somebody right there. <laughs> it was draining me. I was tired. And I sleep good. I am a professional sleeper. I sleep very well. I cherish my sleep. So now that I'm an adult... I actually cherished my childhood years and I realized that I should not have rushed to be so grown. I understand now that adulting is just not fun. I don't like it. I don't want to be an adult no more. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. There's a million Toys and Toys R Us that I can play with. Y'all remember that? That's what I want to do. I don't want to adult no more. I don't want to be responsible. I don't want to pay my bills. I don't want to make choices that have consequences because that's what happens when you're an adult. You know, when you're an adult, you got to be responsible or you should be responsible. You can't just go live and not pay for where you live at. You can't go spend money and don't have income coming in. You know, there's, there's a check and balance to being an adult, right? You make a choice, you have a consequence. You don't work, you don't pay. You don't get paid, you don't work, you don't eat. You don't pay your bills, you don't have a place to stay. You don't keep your car um, um, tuned up, your car break. It's things that happens when you're an adult. I, adulting is not fun. It's not. All right, y'all, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, it have perks, but truthfully, it's a lot of work being an adult. It's a lot. But I'm an adult now, so I can't go back. I got to put the childish things behind me. I got to be an adult, and it is what it is. Amen? So I'm going to walk in my adulthood. But what I really miss most about my childhood is the purity in the belief system. When I was thinking, and I was like, hope, hope. You know, hope is you believing in something, you expecting something, you wanting something. That's what hope is. You, you, you want something to happen. You expect something to happen. When I was a child, if my tooth came out, I put my tooth under the pillow, and I expected the tooth fairy to give me a gift. It was really simple. I missed the purity of the belief system as a child. When you become an adult, the unfortunate thing about being an adult, the experiences teaches us that people will hurt you, people will disappoint you, and guess what happens as a result? Your belief system changes, or it's altered. Your hope changes. Your, your hope fades. You don't have the same hope you had when you was a child because of the situations and the circumstances you've gone through. Y'all miss that. See, when you was a kid, it was real simple. You wake up on Christmas morning and you expected some gifts under the tree. There was just things you expected. If your mama and daddy said you could do this, you believed them. You believed in the superheroes. You believed just because somebody said it, you believed them because their word was their bond. They didn't hurt you. But when you become an adult, when you live, when you, not even adult, but just live life a little bit, your belief system is altered. Your hope changes. It changes because people hurt you. You start finding out when somebody say they're going to do something, they're not doing it for real. When they tell you they're going to be there for you, they're not there for you. When they tell you they got you, they really don't got you. They're stabbing you in the back. Your hope system changes. Things change when you grow up. Amen? Amen. If it didn't happen yet, keep living. 
when, when you grow up, instead of having a conversation like you did when you was a child, and you, st you would lead with positivity, or you would talk about having victory over the situation, you start saying things like, you know, I'm praying and I'm hoping for the best in this situation. You know how, you know how, you know how we Christians, we, 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 talk, we talk defeated a lot of times. For us to be Christians, we talk like we don't lost the fight a long time ago sometimes. Yeah, I'm just praying and I'm hoping for the best because they said, and I'm just praying, I hope, you know, this is what they said, but I'm just praying and hoping. That's how you start talking. You're not hoping if you're talking like that. If you really have hope, instead of saying I'm praying and hoping for the best, you would be like, you know what, this is what they said, this is what the doctor said, but I know what God said. God told me he would never leave or forsake me, so I know that the doctor said this, so in the meantime, I'm going to do the X, Y, Z, because the doctor told me to do X, Y, Z, but I also know that he was ne he's never going to leave me or forsake me, forsake me, so even though I'm doing this, because he asked me to do this, I'm already victorious over here because I have hope. See, you're not like everybody else, you have hope. You don't talk like everybody else because you have hope. We're not doing what other people do because we have hope. So even though my child, he might be wayward right now, she might be wayward my, right now, my situation might not be looking the way I want it to look right now, it's not over. The battle is not fought and finished. The victory is already um, there. I already won. I just got to walk through life and praise God, and I have hope. Amen? Amen. God said he has a plan for me. The plan was not to stumble and stop and get stuck on stooping. The plan was to get me to my expected place. Amen? Amen. I have hope. So my, my conversation is different. I don't talk like I'm defeated like other people talk. I talk like I'm victorious. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's, that's, that's right there when you develop in your hope. With, hope and faith is synonymous. So if I say faith, I'm still saying hope. They're synonyms. They're cousins. They're family. Same bloodline. All right? So when you develop your faith, when you develop your hope, you don't talk like other people talk. You don't walk like other people walk. You do things differently. Even though you're in a situation, in a storm, you have hope. So you don't walk through your storm the way other people walk through theirs. Amen? Amen. You're not stumbling through this storm like other people stumble. When, when that man don't want to act right, when that woman don't want to act right, when that child don't want to act right, when that bill is doing, you don't have no money, you're not stressed and pressed about that situation. You already know God is going to fix it. Amen? Hope is an essential factor in this Christian walk. When we were born, we were all dealt a measure of faith. Now, I don't know if your faith was the size of a mustard seed that you can't see or if it was the size of a mountain. But what I do know is you were dealt a measure. Okay? You were dealt a measure. God already dealt the measure of faith or hope to you. Now it's time for you to develop your faith. How do I develop my faith, Chantel? How do I develop this thing? How do I build my hope back up? I've been broken and bruised so many times. People don't say they're going to be there for me. They wasn't. I thought I had made it to the finish line and just to be knocked back down. How do I develop my faith when I place my trust in this person and this person hurt me to my core? How do I build my faith back up, Chantel? You don't know what I've been going through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how bad things been for me. How do I build my faith? I'm so glad you asked. The first step to building your faith is to read the Word of God. When you begin to meditate on the Word of God, it will become tattooed on your heart. When you begin to meditate on the Word of God, it's tattooed, it's stamped on your heart. Romans 10 through 14, ch chapter 10, 14 and 15 says, How can they call on one unless they, how can they call on the one who they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they not have um, heard? How can they hear without someone preaching to them? How can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the, are the feet of those who are bringing the good news. Guess what? In this new era that we are in, you know, in this new age religion, new age Christianity, this new era of worship, we got a virtual worship happening, some physical, some virtual. In this new era of worship that we're in, you probably, we, we, I know it's new, we got to change with times, but guess what? Some things you just got to be old school about. 
We're in this new era, but we still got to do some stuff in the old school manner. What do you mean by that, Chantel? You still got to be connected to a church where the man or the woman of God is delivering what thus said the Lord. You cannot be a holy Christian holier than thou and you're not connected. Okay? I'm not telling you that means, you, yes, we want you in the building. We want you here physically. Connected don't have to always mean physically and in person, but you got to be connected to a body. I know, I know, I can pray for myself. I know you read and study the word on your own. I know you can walk around and quote a hundred strip scriptures without looking at one. I know, but it is something about being connected to a body that serves the Lord. It is something about being connected to a body that serves the Lord. See, I don't been to, I, I'm a church girl. I grew up, I'm a PK, I grew up in church. I don't been to churches, y'all. I don't see the churches function good, bad, and ugly, all that stuff. And sometimes when you walk into church, you can tell that the spirit of the Lord is not in that place. You can tell that the spirit is not resting in that place. You need to be somewhere where the man or the woman of God is connected to Jesus. How do you know they're connected? Because the way they live their lives will, men will flow, it will meditate, it will penetrate in your life. It flows from the top off of them and down onto you. You will know because you will feel the blessings being of the connection. And you can't get, you can't get God's word. You got to hear it. You got to hear his word. That means somebody else got to deliver that word to you too. You're not the only, if you're the only one hearing the word of God and there's no other voice God is not sending to you, something's wrong. You got to hear the word of God. You got to get in the place to where you can hear the word of God. You got to be connected. You can't develop your hope if you're not hearing what thus says the Lord. Matthew 18 and 20 says, when two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. It's something about when you get close to somebody else and you connect with somebody else and you start thinking on that thing, you start speaking on that thing, you start touching and agreeing. Things happen when you connect with somebody, amen? Things happen when you connect. When you start praying and you get you a real prayer partner and y'all stop trying to pray about what, well, let me see what she praying about today. No, when you start praying and you touching and agreeing with that person and you're not worried about what they praying for, but you tapping into, I want you to be blessed. I want to help you get your blessing. I want you to get this prayer answered. When you start tapping into that thing, something happened. God gets in the midst. He said, oh, wait a minute. I see Sister Strange and Mother White over there praying. They touching and agreeing. I got to go down there and stand in that gap with them. You don't just be by yourself no more. See, when you, when you, have, when you, when you have someone developing your faith, when you got to develop your faith, you need help, people. You need help. There are some strongholds that require more than one person to break. There are some strongholds in this thing called life. It requires more than you to break them. I know you pray and you this and you high and mighty and all that and the other, blah, blah, blah. I, could, I just go to church from home. I worship from home. That's fine and dandy, but there's going to come a point in time when you're going to need the pastor, amen, or you're going to need the bishop. You're going to need the elder. You're going to need the deacon. You're going to need the mother. You're going to need somebody to touch and agree to break a stronghold in your life, amen? amen. That's right. You better get connected, baby. <laughs> you can't do this thing by yourself. You can't. You need somebody. People are putting your life in your path to encourage you, to show you, hey, this happened to me. Guess what? They made it through. They, there are people God strategically placed in your life to show you that where you are now is not where you're meant to be. He places people in your life to say, hey, if she went through this and she could get out of it, you can too. If he went through this and he came out, you can too. Developing your faith, developing your hope, same thing, guys. When you develop that, once you have God's word stamped on your heart, you can refer to it in your time of need. Once God's word is stamped in your heart, see, first you got to hear the word of God. You got to read it. You got to hear it. You got to get in a place where God's word is getting to you. You can't develop your hope and your faith if you're not in a place to where God's word is getting to you, right? Once you're in a place where you're hearing God's word, you're receiving the word of God, you're reading the word of God, it's stamped in your heart, and out of the heart flows the issues of life. So once God's word is in you, 
It's stamped on your heart. It's stamped in your heart. You refer to it in your time of need. That, your time of need, that means you put that thing to use. You know, when something come up, when, when, when you get the report that you got six months to live, and you put it in God's hands and you said, God, just like that woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of your garment and believed she was going to be made whole, I'm going to put your word to use. I'm going to put, I'm going to activate my faith. I'm going to activate my hope. And I'm going to go ahead and touch the hem of your garment. And I want to be made whole right now. When you get that final notice and you got to get put out, you're going to be like that woman, the Shumanite woman who said, I'm, I'm going to make this cake for you, even though I only got a little bit of oil. Was that the Shumanite woman? Yeah, the Shumanite woman that had made the cake with a little bit of oil, and she was going to die. Huh? Her child was going to die. But she said, I'm going to bless you because you're hungry, and she fed him. And guess what? Because she activated her faith and her hope, every time she went back to go dig in that jar, there was oil there for her to keep cooking. That's what you're going to do. You don't talk like other people talk when you got hope, when you got faith, when you activate your faith, when you develop your faith, when you're in a position to receive what thus said the Lord. You talk different. You walk different. You look different. Amen. You put God's words to use. Everybody can't, anybody can't say anything to you no more. You know how people like to come tell you stuff? Everybody can't come tell you anything no more. That was, whoever received it, that was for you. So I'm back in my childhood days now, and some of us going to have to think a little longer, but it's okay. How many of you remember learning how to ride a bike? <laughs> Y'all don't do that. <laughs> in the beginning, you may have to put, have used training wheels to help you balance, right? I remember having my little bicycle. I think I started with a tricycle, but when I got my little two-wheel bicycle, I had some training wheels, and they were wobbly. I still, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was wobbling, but it was okay. But they helped me balance. But you use the training wheels in the beginning because they help you balance. But once you ride long enough, guess what happens? Your confidence builds. And you're not afraid of falling. And guess what that means? That means it's time for the training wheels to come off. Many of us, we're learning how to ride a bike. Let's use this analogy. The riding a bike and developing your faith. In the beginning, you get on. You don't trust everything. You don't believe everything. You need something to hold on to. That's why you need a partner. That's why you can't do this faith walk, this hope walk by yourself. You need somebody to bounce something off back and forth to so they can encourage you to keep going. Amen? Amen. That's why you get connected to a body of Christ so you're not alone in your walk. Amen? Amen? So you're riding a bike in the beginning, and you got to put your training wheels on. And that's where your training wheels are. You come in a Bible study. You're attending Bible study. You're joining a, a ministry. You're, you're getting connected with people because now you got to have people to help support you. That's the training wheels. Amen? Y'all missing this thing. I feel, Jesus, I got that right now. You get your training wheels. You got your training wheels. You're developing because now you're getting surrounded by people. God is strategically placing people in your life that's going to help you build and develop your faith, your hope. And then as, as you develop your faith, you start talking different. You're not talking about how it was and how it used to be, how it's not working, how, it's ba how bad it is. He just won't act right. You're not worried about how he act no more. You're worried about you now. You're talking different now. Amen? Then it's time for the training wheels to come off. It's time for the training wheels to come off. It's time for some of you all to take the training wheels off and develop in your hope. I'm going to say it again. It's time for some of y'all to take these training wheels off. You don't held on to your clutch long enough, all right? Now it's time to be a big person. Now it's time to grow up and activate your faith. Amen? You got to stop riding cautiously. You can't be riding like you're scared in this thing called hope, in this thing called faith. Faith people, listen, this ain't for the faint of heart. You cannot get weary and well doing walking a faith walk. They will throw all kind of darts and stares, snares at you to get you off track. You cannot say, oh, my God, they kicked me out of the choir. They didn't let me lead this song. They told me I had to sit here. That couldn't sit on my favorite seat. This ain't for the faint of heart. You got to activate your faith. Oh, my God, Bishop ain't calling me. He didn't tell me happy birthday. Really? Happy birthday. <laughs> happy 
happy birthday. Because you know how it is. Everybody can say something to you, but that one person ain't said, so you mad because you ain't even thinking about all the people that don't acknowledge you. You mad at the one that didn't. Get the train of wheels off. Stop riding cautiously. Activate the word of God and use it in your life. God, you said that I'm above and not beneath. God, you said I'm the head and not the tail. God, you said I'm more than a conqueror. God, you said I am healed. God, you said I am blessed and my seeds are blessed and my seed seed are blessed. God, you said, put that thing back on God. See, that's how you got to do. The training wheels are off now. And let me, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hold on. So then you got to say, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter who said what. It don't matter who came to tell you who said what. It don't matter what the people said. It don't matter what the streets said. The streets always talking, y'all. It don't matter what said, who said, what did that, da 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 boo boo bah, what. It don't matter who said what. Who said that? You did. It don't matter, because guess what? You know what God said concerning you. For I know the thoughts I think towards you. I know the plans I have towards you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. So whoever said whatever they said, it don't matter. I don't care if it hurts you. It can't harm you. It can't stop you. It can't block you. Only thing it can do is prosper you. Amen? You know what God said concerning you. And this is the thing. We get so, you know, I, I, I go back and forth with this because I, I, I try to be the bigger person and I be petty sometimes. My pettiness just wins. Whew. Jesus don't let me be petty. I get mad sometimes when people don't just see the pureness in, in my heart and my thoughts and, and the way that I, I try to be. And I, it bothers me sometimes. And I just want them to know, I just, I don't mean it like that. I want to be this way. And then I had, God had to tell me, girl, look, you can't be bothered with what they think or feel. You did you, you acted out of the goodness of your heart. It is what it is. Move on. They're mad. They the ones not happy. You move on. Y'all got to get out of that. Stop worrying about what people think. Stop being stuck on, on what somebody said or did. They gonna talk about you whether you blessed or hurt or whatever, so you might as well live your blessed best life. Amen? Amen? It don't matter about what somebody said. You know what God said about you. Man, when I tell you, you gotta really, every day, I, I got affirmations for everything. I send my family daily inspirations. But when I tell you, I wake up every morning, I say, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm worthy, I'm wealthy. I say that every morning. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm worthy, I'm wealthy. And I put it in that order because I got to be healthy to, to, to accept the prosperous plans God has for me. I don't want to be sick getting them. So I'm healthy. And then I want to be happy because all this mental illness and stuff with people not happy, I want to be happy. I'm healthy and I'm happy. Amen. I'm in my good mind. I don't care how bad things are getting, how much I might be here and there, da, 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 I'm happy. Amen? I'm worthy. I am worthy of the blessings of God. I am worthy of God's choice blessings. I'm worthy to be who I am. I'm worthy to walk in this place. I'm worthy to sit where I sit. I'm worthy to go where I go. I'm worthy. Hey, hey. Yes. And guess what? I'm wealthy. I got money. I'm rich. And I'm rich in my heart, I'm rich in my soul, I'm rich in my spirit. I am not lacking any good thing concerning me. God giving me all that I said I can have, all that he said I can have. He giving me above and beyond what I can think, imagine, or ask for. Amen? That's right. You got to start talking like what, what God says concerning you. I, listen, this thing, I was blessed. I was feeling good, y'all. <laughs> I can't jump too much, but I was, I was like, whew, yes, yes, Chantel, yes, whew, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm worthy, I'm wealthy. I say that thing every morning, I do, and I tell my kids to say it. 
I send inspirations to my family because you know what? We need to be reminded. That's how you develop your faith and develop your hope. You don't just say one thing one time and walk away. You got to keep repeating it, keep saying it, keep revisiting it. You got to keep activating that thing. You don't develop faith by doing it one time and leaving it alone. Y'all remember this movie? I love this movie. Y'all remember the movie Forrest Gump? Listen, I love the movie. Such a great movie. Forrest Gump, Forrest was a special little boy. He was different. He didn't walk that good. He had an issue walking, so he needed some braces to help him walk. And at first, Forrest, when he got the braces, the leg braces, he walked, but he didn't bend his knees. <laughs> Now that's that. I mean, that's a sight. It's a sight. He couldn't bend his knees. And because he walked funny and he was different, he was bullied. The kids bullied him because he had a disability, because he was different. But he had this friend. His friend's name was Jenny. You know Jenny. 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 He had Jenny. Jenny was his friend. And they would be walking home from school and the bullies would come up and they would start throwing things at Forrest and Jenny would get in front and she would pick up a rock and she would throw the rock and she'd say, run Forrest, run! <laughs> and she'd hold the bullies off and in the beginning, Forrest would run, but he couldn't bend his knees so he couldn't go nowhere real fast. <laughs> so the bullies would catch up to him and beat him up. That's, that happened in the beginning. But when I was younger, I couldn't get past the fact that Forrest was being bullied because he was different. I felt sorry for him because of his disability. But I was happy because he had a friend who fought for him. But now when I look at the movie, I look at the movie differently now. Forrest was different. He wasn't different because he was of his disability. He was different because of his mindset. Forrest was physically, he had physical incapabilities in the, in the, in the moment. Yeah, he had thinking, physical limitations, but the limitations didn't stop his mind. You understand? He wasn't different because he couldn't walk properly. He was different because he had a different mindset than everybody else. Everybody else was worried and consumed and, and couldn't get past the fact that Forrest couldn't walk. He was somewhere else walking. He was different because of his mindset. So this morning, I came to tell you, you are not like everyone around you. You are the set aside people. You are different. Because you are different, everybody doesn't know how to handle you. I got to say that one again. Because you are different, everybody around you don't know how to handle you. Everybody can't take you because you're different. That's a good thing, by the way. You don't need a crowd to be around you. You don't need a crowd. You just need one person that's going to fight for you. Luckily, you, me, we, we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We have a friend that when we call on him, he hears our cry. You're not even really in a fight. Guess what? This fight, this battle, it is not even yours. You're not fighting this fight because all you got to do is go tag and say, God, I'm struggling right now, and he will enter the fight, and he will fix it, and the fight will be over. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's, and if it's God's fight, it's already won. Amen? You're not, this, you're not like everybody else. When all these other people going around, walking around, crying about their situations and circumstances and problems and stuff, and they, they just whining like they do all the time, and, and then you walk them through and talk them through, and then the next month they got a new problem that you got to walk them through and talk them through, you're not like them. I want to challenge you this morning to develop your hope, develop your faith. I want you to run like Forrest ran. I want you to run, because after a while, Forrest kept running, and as he got older, one day they came to get him, and Forrest ran, so them braces fell off of him. 
Forrest was running. Forrest was running. He ran across the country. Forrest ran. They couldn't even catch him. And you know what the Holy Spirit told me when I was typing this? You so far into this race where you don't get weary and well doing. Now, yeah, before in the beginning, like the training wheels, you couldn't go fast. You needed help. But after a while, you get stronger. You get stronger. You keep running. The braces come off. The training wheels come off. You running. You running fast. You don't have to. You can run a steady pace, fast pace. It don't matter. But you running. And guess what? You shaking the devil off of you. You shaking the enemy off of you. They going to keep trying to come after you, but they can't catch you because you running. You going to keep running. You going to see what the end going to be. You're not going to stop. You're not going to slow on falter. You're not going to waver. You're not going to fall off. You're going to keep running. You're going to keep moving. Every time they throw a dart, you're going to say, whoop, still on course. Whoop, I backed up. Guess what? Let me go around this thing. Whoop, uh-oh, hold on, hold on. I got to crawl a little bit. You still going. You still pressing your way. You running like Forrest ran. Don't give up in this walk. Don't give up in this faith. Keep reading the word of God. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Say that thing. Say, I know. I know what God said concerning me. Put your name on it. I know what God said about Chantel. God said he, prom- he wants to prosper me. Not to harm me. Prosper you, not harm you. He's going to give you plans to give you a hope. Hope. Guys, you can't let your hope fade. You can't let your hope fade. If your hope fade, the race is over. You can't go nowhere if your hope fade. I know I have the plans for you, to declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Guys, we are already blessed. We are not like everybody else in this world. We are not like everybody else. Guys, guess what? We're not like them because we have something they don't have. We have hope. Amen? Amen. That's the word. We have hope. The Ukrainians have hope. They are coming back to fight for their country right now because they have hope. They have hope. We are even, I don't care what we're dealing with, who the president, who ain't the president, who's in charge, who's not in charge, it don't matter. Because guess what? Gas can go to $5 a barrel. It could be $5. It don't matter. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to fuss about it. But guess what? It's okay because I have hope. I have hope. I'm like that woman. Every time I go dip my thing, my my little cup in that oil, it's going to be something there. I have hope. You have hope. We have hope. Develop your hope, people. Good morning. Amen. What a word. Amen. Were you blessed? Just like Chantel said, I I can see Forrest in my head running until them brackets broke off his legs. And it took me back to my bicycle uh, my, 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 what do you call it? Training wheels. It took me back there. And what I thought about was after riding your, your training wheel, your bike with your training wheels and falling so many times and getting up and you keep going, after a while, you didn't even realize it, but you were riding those little training wheels had them bent up. So instead of being down, they were actually up in the air. So before my dad actually took the training wheels off, I was already riding a bike without assistance. And that's just like some of us. We still have the training wheels on in our Christian walk. And you didn't realize it, but with all the falls that you have taken and all the beatings and and the bruises that you've encountered on this thing called life, and you falling down and getting up, every time you fell and you got up, the training wheels lifted. So you don't, you, you still... It's if you need assistance, but you've already been riding and riding and riding that all you all you need is the training wheels to come all the way off because you've been riding and you've been doing this thing called life. The training wheels have already lifted up off the ground. So you have to be reminded today after that amazing word that your faith should stand on a firm foundation of God's promises. Your faith should speak what God says. Your faith should say what God's word says. It should declare everything because that's hope. God's promises, God's word is hope. It, It can't come back to him void. So you have to remember that your faith 
should always stand on the firm foundation of God's word. It should always speak what God says. It should always declare what he says because it can't come back to him void. Get ready to speak. How she said, what you say, Chantel? I'm what? I'm healthy. I'm happy. I'm worthy. And I'm wealthy. I'm not rich. I'm wealthy. Wealthy in spirit. Wealthy in my mind. Wealthy. So get ready to stand. Get ready to speak. Get ready to declare everything that God said. His promises are a firm foundation. Amen. After hearing that word, maybe there is one in virtual land. Maybe there's one here who want to give your life to Christ. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is repeat after me, Lord Jesus come into my heart I believe you died on the cross and you rose again the third day with all power in your hand come into my life be my Lord and Savior Satan I denounce you in the name of Jesus Lord thank you for saving a wrench like me and if you did that, if you said that, connect yourself with a Bible-believing church. We would love to have you here at The Hope. We're here Monday through Friday from 9 to about 5 o'clock. You can come in. You can call in 305-696-7745. We are ready to receive you. Amen, amen, and amen. Bishop, come on up. Come on, prophetess. What a word. What a word. We are the to you. Oh, my sister. He is going to give you. He will give you bread and It's what he wants to do. All you got to do is come. thank God for what has transpired here today. Amen. We thank God for the awesome word given by Chantel Holtz Rich. Let's give her a hand one more time. Amen. Thanks to my daughter Erica for being the facilitator today. This is the day the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Boy, she took us way back to those training wheels. Everybody remember those training wheels. If you, if you learn how to ride a bike without training wheels, you're good. But uh, we needed the tricycle first, the training wheel next, and we knew we were on our way. Back in my day, we had those little gravel roads. It wasn't the type of roads we got now. They were gravel roads. And um, when the training wheels came off, I was riding my bike so fast, I couldn't stop. I didn't know how to put on brakes. So the way I stopped was I would fall into the cherry tree. <laughs> I get up, I be all scratched up, but I was happy. And I got back on the bike again and started riding up and down that road. When it came time for me to stop, I fell into the cherry tree bush again. Boy, I stopped, you know, after a while, you, you get tired of getting bruised. And you learn how to put on brakes. Amen? But that's what life would do for you. And that analogy, Chantel, about Forrest Gump was off the chain. Yeah. Amen. One of our favorite movies. You know, Forrest one day, but when those, he started running, those braces came off. He ran cross town and uh, he, he got a big old beard, you know, because he didn't stop running. <laughs> wow. Boy, he was, he was something else. What a way. What a word. What a word. Prophetess, what a word, huh? 
I can't, I can't put nothing on top of it, and I won't take nothing away. Listen, it's time for us to sow our seeds. You may have your seats in the sanctuary. And for those who are watching virtually, thank you so much for keeping New Hope up in prayer and being a part of this ministry. Thank you for seeding and sowing and supporting uh, the work of God that he's doing here. We are so glad that you have you know, tuned in and chimed in and shared uh, this ministry and this word, this message with all of your friends. I know they were blessed because we were blessed here in the sanctuary. Amen. One more time. Let's give Chantel a big hand. One more time. Now today you can sow your seed today by going to our official cash app, dollar sign NHMBC1881. NHMBC1881 is the official cash app for the New Hope Church here in Miami. You can sow your seed there, so sow your gifts, and it will arrive at the storehouse. Or you can go online and give through Tifling, or you can text give. The number to do that is on your screen right now. Amen. We want to make it so easy for you to partake and participate in the plan process promulgated by God. Amen. And you can go to our website, newhopembc.com. And once you're there, press the give or the donate button, and your seed, your tithe, your offerings, your gifts will arrive there at the storehouse. And last but not least, you can get an envelope, amen, and put your gifts inside. You can give it while you're here, mail it in or bring it in. Like Erica said, we're here every day, Monday through Friday, from 9 to 5, just to serve and to service you. Thank you for being such a great supporter, good steward over those treasures God has placed in your person. I believe that when we sow the seed, God will open the windows of heaven and send the blessings back down to us that we don't have room enough to receive. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. What a wonderful day this is and what a wonderful word we've heard today. Amen. Chantel, come on and join us again. Amen. This past weekend, we had a chance to go back to our uh, college university. Uh, there, while we were there, uh, our fraternity, my fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi Incorporated, our chapter, the Zeta Phi chapter, uh, celebrated its 50th year being incorporated there on the campus of the University of Florida. Had a chance to go home, we call it. It was homecoming for us and had a chance to see some brothers and, that I haven't seen in 50 years. Wow. My God. And we had a great time and um, had a chance to network and fellowship. And what a great, great uh, weekend we have experienced. Prophets was there with me. Amen. She was looking real good. Amen, somebody. <laughs> and uh, the glow from her hit me. So I looked a little bit better. Amen, somebody. <laughs> But we had such a wonderful time. Yes, ma'am? Okay. We had such a wonderful time there in Gainesville. And uh, we had to hustle back yesterday and getting ready to go on spring break uh, with the family. So we are going to celebrate Chantel's message all week long. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to remind her as she tried to get some sleep, I'm going to wake her up saying, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Put your training wheels on. Amen. Amen. Okay, yeah. Randy's in Chicago, him and his wife, Trina, and the family, and they're flying back in this afternoon. So, uh, yeah, we're getting ready to have a great time in Orlando. The um, two reasons why I came back from Gainesville early, two reasons, uh, two reasons. Number one, I came back early because I wanted to be in church Sunday morning. Amen. I wanted to be in church. The second reason I came back early I had to get my golf clubs <laughs> so we can play some golf next week. I love y'all. I love y'all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and speak in tongue. I told you. Well, we are so grateful and thankful to the New Hope Church. Praying much for all of you. Praying for your families. Praying for your wealth, your health, and your well-being that God will keep you in his care. Yes, Brenda. 
Next week uh, for spring break, yes, next week for spring break, now Monday through Friday, uh, the church will be uh, closed. Uh, all activities will be suspended until next Sunday morning. Uh, but we will still have virtual Bible study, and we're still going to conduct our prayer lines on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from uh, 6 to 7 a.m. in the morning. So, But the physical church will be uh, uh, closed next week until next Sunday morning. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. Happy birthday to our sister, Minister Ann Holton. God bless you today. And God bless my sister Pam Jones. I want some birthday cake. All right. God bless you all for being here today. And to our granddaughter, Amari, is here from Atlanta. God bless you. Somebody else? Stephanie. Deacon S. President Stephanie Ray, happy birthday. Carnell White. Elder Carnell White. Happy birthday. All right. God bless you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Uh -huh. Let the church Everybody. say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. The church say, Amen. Oh, can I get a witness? Let the church oh. say, Amen. To what his word say, Let the church to what his will say, is. Amen. God has spoken, God has spoken. So let the church, let the church, let the whole church. Say, your response Amen Whatever he says Amen From the healing of your body Amen To the raising of the dead Amen No matter how you're feeling Amen How your world is real Amen Not a wound through the night Amen Cause you're going to fight Red Sea. Continue to say, because your help is on the way. Amen. Why? God has spoken. Well, well, well. Let the, church Let the whole church. Amen. Congratulations to my grandson, Jordan. He had three for three at bat yesterday and hit a triple. Amen. Yes, sir. Had so many art. Had so many RBIs, that means runs batted in, I couldn't keep track of. Amen. So many, I couldn't keep track of them. But Jordan, continue. And my other son, Ethan, continue. Another baseball player. So proud of you guys. You're growing up. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and one day present us faultless before his presence. To him, the all-knowing, the all-wise God. Be love, dominion, and power now and forever. Let the church say, yeah. Amen. Amen. Love you, New Hope. Amen. Have a wonderful spring break. Oh!